What's up guys, welcome to STA 3047, Introduction to Machine Learning. First thing we'll cover today in the preface is that this is not, in fact, machine learning. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Um, so in popular discourse, what you'll find is that people often mistake a particular set of algorithms for uh, the science of machine learning itself, uh, when in fact uh, the science of machine learning has very little to do with any particular set of algorithms. Uh, in the strict sense, uh, machine learning is really only concerned with a single question. And that is, given a finite set of data points, uh, is learning feasible? Okay. Now, we can make that more concrete by actually defining what that means mathematically. And this typically involves attaching a probability to some statement about learning. And that you know, leads you down the road towards strategies or algorithms to conduct learning. Um, but in essence, it's got nothing to do with any particular set of algorithms. Okay, now you don't need to worry about that. Uh, for our purposes, what we'll do is we will actually focus on a small subset of algorithms that are often used in the practical applications of uh, machine learning. Um, so this course is more like a bread and butter type machine learning course rather than uh, fundamental machine learning. Okay, so later on when you do honors with us and masters, um, you'll be able to do, uh, you know, first first principles machine learning. Um, so this is really just scaffolding to get you to that point. So up until now, we've primarily been con uh, concerned with structured model classes. Um, so what this typically involves is we have some mathematical formula with uh, useful statistical properties baked in. And what we try and do is we try and build a mathematical model of a generating process for whatever data we see in the real world. Okay, now uh, an obvious question to ask is, uh, is that even a realistic approach uh, for really complicated uh, phenomena that we see in the real world? You know, um, is there any advantage to being very structured? Uh, maybe, maybe we should consider being unstructured in our approach. Okay, and that's really the motivation behind machine learning. Um, and it's quite easy to motivate. Um, so for example, is it possible for a statistician to always build a model of a generating process for phenomena that they see in the real world? Um, I mean, we often have to make simplifying assumptions such as linearity or use convenient distributions in order to make them robust and interpretable. Um, but, you know, is that good for prediction or for whatever particular task we have in mind? Um, and, you know, is, is it realistic to assume that a statistician can come up with a plausible relationship between predictors and responses in really complicated scenarios? Uh, and, I mean, do we even care? Typically, we, you know, build these simplified uh, structures so that we can interpret them. Uh, but in some applications, we don't actually care about that, that interpretation. Um, to give you an example uh, of, of a modern application of machine learning, uh, let's think about uh, autonomous vehicles, right? So, uh, I don't know, maybe you have, you have a Tesla that drives itself uh, and it's got some automated, uh, I don't know, collision avoidance system. Uh, do you really care what the Tesla sees or whatever? Um, you know, what the relationship is between the visual inputs it gets and the likelihood of an accident is. All you really care about is whether it can accurately predict whether an accident is going to occur or not. Okay. So uh, in some cases, we don't actually care about the particulars of the relationship. We only care about the prediction accuracy, right? And, uh, you know, unstructured models typically give you that, that advantage. Right, so what we'll be doing is we'll be developing an unstructured learning approach under the so-called statistical learning paradigm. Okay, and under this paradigm, what we need to do is we need to distinguish between two types of learning problems, supervised and unsupervised. Okay. So for supervised learning problems, uh, typically we are tasked with extracting a pattern uh, from the data with the aim of predicting some response, okay? And for each observation, we go and record some set of predictors, and then we also get an example of a response or a label attached to that coordinate, okay? And our learning algorithm will try and associate the coordinate in the predictor space uh, with the example labels, okay? And hence it's called supervised because it's got examples to look at um, of what type of response is expected for any particular coordinate. Okay, so for unsupervised learning problems, uh, what, we are, what we are typically tasked with 
is finding structure in the data without the aid of any labels or example responses. Indeed, the aim is not to predict any particular response, simply to uh, you know, figure out is there any structure to how the predictors arise. Okay, so to give an example of what this would look like, uh, I've set up a sort of uh, artificial two-dimensional example. And what we've done here is uh, we've recorded the uh, positions of a number of observations in a two-dimensional predictor space. And uh, for each one of those coordinates, uh, we've recorded a label. Okay, in this case, the labels take on values one, two, three, or four. Okay, and uh, I've colored them accordingly. So uh, clearly you can see, okay, for some of these responses, uh, they sort of group together in certain positions in the predictor space. Okay, now what we will do is we'll have some learning algorithm try and figure out, okay, well, what is the pattern? What is the relationship between these labels and their positions in the predictor space? Okay, once our model has, or our learning algorithm has learned that pattern, uh, we can then provide it with new, new observations and we can ask for a prediction. Okay, right. Now, in this case, it's obvious that uh, you know, the predictions are informed not only by the positions of the predictors in the, in the, in the predictor space, uh, but also by the example labels that we've had. Okay, so that's a classic supervised learning problem. Right. Uh, in the case of unsupervised learning problems, we have a totally different starting point. Okay, so we start out, we record the positions of our observations in the predictor space, and that's all we have. Okay. And uh, our job will then be to figure out if there's any structure to how those coordinates arise. Okay, now going back to our two-dimensional example again, uh, what we can see is, okay, there aren't any labels, but obviously based on where these observations are relative to each other, so i.e. their proximity to each other, uh, we could postulate that they maybe they cluster together. Okay, so that would be an example of a structure in the data. Okay. And for unsupervised learning problems, what we then need to uh, do is we need to figure out uh, algorithms for, uh, you know, e extracting such structures. So typically these will be uh, clustering algorithms, uh, things like that. And for this example, what I've done is I've run, I think it was a simple uh, k-nearest neighbors, you know, clustering algorithm. And what it'll do it is it will try and, based on where these observations are, assign new labels to them. Okay, so that's what the difference is. In the supervised learning case, you are given examples of labels. In the unsupervised case, uh, it's your job to figure out, one, should you be assigning labels? Uh, I do things cluster. And two, if they do, uh, you know, how many do you assign? So in this problem, okay, based on our visual um, estimation, we can say that maybe there are four groups. Okay, but, uh, you know, n not all problems are as obvious as this one and our algorithm will have to try and figure out, well, how many clusters are there? And, you know, can we assign these, how can we assign these observations to those clusters? And then finally, I mean, we can also be given a new set of predictors, and then we have to have some decision rule assigning it to any one of those uh, clusters, okay? Uh, and that's basically uh, what un, uh, unsupervised learning is about. Okay, now in this course, um, we will be primarily focused on supervised learning problems, uh, not unsupervised. That's something we start covering in honors. Um, but for this sort of intro section of the course, you will still be asked maybe to distinguish between supervised and unsupervised learning problems. And um, these are not always obvious, um, not as obvious as I've made it, made it here. Right, so supervised learning problems can further be uh, broken down into classification and regression problems. Um, and these tasks are distinguished based on the nature of the response variable. Right, so in classification problems, as the name suggests, uh, we are concerned with either dichotomous or polytomous response variables. So you will have seen this already in logistic regression and nominal logistic regression. So where the outcome is typically of the label type, right? So zero, one, or, you know, zero, one, two, three, four, whatever, sort of categorical, okay? Um, and then finally, we will have regression problems. So these are cases where the response variable is numeric, okay? So maybe you wanna predict, I don't know, someone's bank balance or 
I don't know, the amount of rain that we're going to have, uh, something like that. And um, yeah, so you, usually one of the first things we need to do in any supervised learning task is establish whether we actually have a classification or a regression problem. And uh, you'll even see in practice that sometimes what you'll have is a regression problem which you then turn into a classification task. Um, this, this often happens in the medical field, for example. Uh, but regardless, it's an important bit, and you'll see later on why this plays an important role in how you formulate your algorithm. Right, so in what remains for this course, what we'll be doing is we'll be looking at uh, two model classes or sets of algorithms uh, for performing classification and regression. Okay, And these will be classification and regression trees. Uh, these are really your bread and butter type machine learning algorithms. This is something you'll probably have, end up using in practice wherever you end up. Um, I mean, it's not my favorite, but certainly it's a very useful uh, tool and it's very useful for interpretation as well. Okay, uh, and then finally, uh, the exciting bit, I guess for a lot of you, is that we'll be covering standard feed-forward neural networks, okay, uh, both for classification and regression. Okay? And this will just sort of be intro your introduction into the world of neural networks. Uh, and we'll do some pretty cool stuff with that. Okay. So uh, in the next lecture, what we'll do is we'll kick off with the actual model mechanics of classification and regression trees. Cheers.